Hello friends, I hope everybody out there is having a fantastic day today. Have you ever heard the excuse that the Bible is too hard to understand? It's all riddles. It's all spiritual. And it needs to be interpreted in order to understand it. So why bother? Is this really what the person believes? Or are they using this as an excuse to not read God's Word? Even worse, do they honestly believe that excuse will work the day they're kneeling before an all-powerful God who knows every single detail and thought of one's life. Seriously. People like to repeat things they hear that sounds good. At one point in that person's life, they heard someone else say, the Bible is too hard to understand. It's all spiritual. And it needs to be interpreted by someone who's who's been to college, you know, a priest, or and so on and so on. The person hears this, and it sounds like a great excuse to them. So they adopt that excuse themselves, and they repeat it when they're asked questions about the Bible. Okay? It's monkey see, monkey do. And if the Bible is too hard to understand, then someone explain to me why it's the best seller in the entire world ever in history. If the Bible is too hard to understand, then someone explain to me why an eight-year-old kid can explain the plan of salvation after reading it. You see, the Bible isn't too hard to understand at all. The problem is people who reject God in their hearts want nothing to do with Him, and the last thing they want to do is read His Word, where it points out their fallen state. It burns their conscience. It forces them to see that without God, there's no hope. And they, they don't want to see or believe that at all. So, so they choose to ignore the Bible and they adopt the excuse that's been used by billions of people around the world today. You know, there's a major religion on this planet that's taught throughout history that the Bible isn't for the common man. It's too hard to understand. In order to understand it, one must attend seminary for many, many years. Then only, then only then will they be able to interpret the spiritual riddles of God's Word, so they think. And this is taught in that religion, folks. The people are brainwashed into believing that the only way they'll understand God's Word is to listen to someone's interpretation of God's Word and to believe another man's view of what the Bible says. I can't tell you how dangerous this is. It's the foundation for all false religions and cults today. Every single one of them. You see, religion wasn't invented by God. It was invented by man. It's man's evil way of turning God into politics. It's developing a system to control mankind through manipulating God's word. You know, I often hear people say religion is the cause of all wars. My question for them is, who created religion? Man. Man created religion. Thus, man is the cause of all wars, not God. You see, atheists attempt to make God look like he's, he's the one who causes all the wars. Nothing could be further from the truth. God hates wars. But because he's allowed free will, he allows mankind to have wars, which will ultimately serve his purpose in the end. To establish peace on earth, finally. And he will be the one to put his foot down at the second coming and he will rule and reign over a world of peace soon my friends it's coming soon now going back to this major world religion you see throughout history this one religion has dictated what its members know about God controlling them to believe in the religion more than they believe in the God of the Bible it's all about control dear friends if they can keep you confused about God's Word, then they can manipulate you and your emotions. They can keep you from for they can keep you coming back for answers that will never be given, not even over a lifetime of going to those religious services. Did you know that at one point in history 
This major religion killed anyone who was found with a Bible. They even went so far as to keep the Bible written in Latin and made it illegal to translate it over to English so the common man, woman, and child couldn't read it. They sent their people to schools to learn Latin. Then these people would interpret the Bible in Latin over to English for the members of that religion. Very dangerous. So dangerous, hundreds of millions of people were killed because of it. If people were found with a Bible, killed. If people were found reading the Bible, killed. If people were teaching another interpretation, killed. If people refused that religion for another, killed. If people were found with an English version of the Bible, killed. And I'm not talking about the religion of Islam here, people. Think about it. Let me share with you just a little bit about this religion. And I want you to use your wisdom in determining just who I'm talking about. This religious organization, its armies, reduced large population of innocent people to rubble in their attempts to maintain power throughout the world. In some cases, over three quarters of the population was destroyed by some of the most horrific tortures imaginable. This kind of onslaught cannot be called anything less than a holocaust. Through some research, I read about Bohemia by 1600, the year 1600, in a population of 4 million, 80% were Protestant Christians. When they were done with their persecution, only 800,000 people were left, and they all belonged to this particular religion. They were not Protestants or Muslims, my friends. In Austria and Hungary, half the population of Protestants Christians were slaughtered. In Poland, by the end of the 16th century, this evil religious organization used murder and persecution as, as its primary method to flush out Christians off the face of the earth. In Italy, the Reformation was getting a real hold, but the Inquisition got busy and, and hardly a trace of Christian Protestants were left. In Spain, the Reformation never really made much headway because the Inquisition was already there. Every effort for freedom or independent thinking was crushed with a ruthless hand. In Torquemada in 1420 to 1498, a Dominican monk, arch inquisitor in 18 years burned 10,200 people and condemned all of them to perpetual the ones that were alive to perpetual imprisonment he imprisoned 97,000 people victims were usually burned alive in public squares and religious festivities would take place at the same time while they'd be watching Christ Christians burn to a crisp from 1481 to 1808 there were at least 100,000 martyrs and 1.5 million Christians banished. In the 16th and 17th centuries alone, the Inquisition extinguished the literary life of Spain and put the nation almost outside the circle of European civilization. In 50 years, the, Euro the Reformation had swept Europe with most of Germany, Switzerland, Netherlands, Scandinavia, England, Scotland, Bohemia, Austria, Hungary, Poland. And then we're making headway to France. This was a, a gigantic blow to this evil religious organization, which in turn organized the Counter-Reformation. And by means of the Council of Trent in, in over 18 years, from 1545 to 63, you know, Rome was organized for an aggressive onslaught of Christians. And under their brutal leadership, they regained much of the lost territory in South Germany and Bohemia and Austria and Hungary and Poland and, and crushed the Reformation in France. Within a hundred years, by 1689, the Counter-Reformation had spent its force. The principal rulers who fought these wars were Charles the fifth 
of Spain against German Protestants. Philip II of Spain against Holland, England. Fernadand. These are just a few people out of dozens, folks. The Reformation movement was followed by a hundred years of religious war. War on the German Christians. War on the, on the Christians of the Netherlands. And in France. King Philip's attempt against England in 1588. 30 years of war from 1618 to 1648. In these wars, political and national rivalries were all involved as well as questions of property for the church in most countries owned they owned one third to one fifth of all the land not our church folks I'm talking about this religious this evil religious empire this beast is what I'm talking about but every one of these wars was started for the purpose of crushing true Christians those who were well aware that pagan religions were just another form of Satanism. They were the aggressors. The Christians were the ones on the defensive, folks. The Dutch, German, nor French Protestants became political parties till after the years of persecution. The number of martyrs under papal persecutions far outnumbered the early Christian martyrs under this satanic religious di dictatorship. Hundreds of thousands of Christians of Germany, Netherlands, Bohemia, and other countries. You know, it's common to excuse them in this matter by saying that, you know, it was just a spirit of the age back then. Whose age was it? And who made it so? It was their age. It was their world. For a thousand years, they had been training the world to be in subjection to them. If this pagan religion had not taken the Bible from the people, the people would have known better and it would not have happened. Further documents show that evil religious beasts martyred untold millions of innocent people because they chose to be Christian Protestants and they, they wanted to follow Jesus according to the scriptures. If you've wondered what the Antichrist system will do, during the seven years of Daniel, Daniel's week, imagine everything I just told you and multiply it by a thousand, folks. The tribulation, especially the latter half, will be a bloodbath filled with people who love and trust Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. It truly will be the worst time in history, and you don't want to be part of it. And there are people out there who tell me that Christians must go through the tribulation period to prove themselves worthy to God in order to be saved and raptured at the end. What? Are you kidding me? Apparently, these people haven't heard of the of Fox's Book of Martyrs. Apparently, these people have no interest in reading history of what happened to the tens of tens and tens of millions and millions of Christians already. This is another twisted view of God's word, straight from those who don't read it. Instead, they listen to the lies out there. Friends, this is the result of not reading God's word for yourselves. This is the result of man's religion. This has nothing to do with God. This is the wickedness that's within each and every person that's ever lived. Let me just say here and now, this one religion isn't the only one who's been persecuting Christians worldwide. I mean, just look at the news. We see another one of man's religions killing and jailing and torturing Christians worldwide right now as I speak. And you know what? Take a wild guess which other religion is begging the world to unite under one with them. Take a wild guess. And the only way to get free from this, my friends, is through Jesus Christ, the true gospel, the gospel of salvation. It's the only way, the one way, the true way, the only door to heaven is through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of Lords and King of Kings and God in the flesh, and he will live and reign forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. So get used to it. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 
chapter 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. Now, if you don't know Christ Jesus is your Savior today, then please, I beg you, consider the results of not knowing Him. It's not going to be a pretty picture, dear friend. If you want to be sure that no matter what happens, you'll be in heaven when the time comes, that you'll be caught up from the grips of the coming Antichrist, the bloodbath that's coming, and you'll be spared from taking part in the worst time ever to hit the earth. Worse than Noah's flood. Worse than anything that's ever going to happen. That's what Jesus Christ said. Those are the words that came out of his mouth. He said it would be a time worse than the flood. Which killed everybody on earth. And it will be worse than any time in the future. Okay. God said it himself. So it's going to happen. It's going to be hell on earth. And you do not want to be here. If you sincerely understand and, and and you really do understand in your heart sincerely that you're on the wrong path covered in your sins you know you sinned against God you know you keep sinning against God and you know you can't stop sinning against God and you sincerely want to change that because you realize that you're dead in those sins without Jesus Christ then with sincere conviction admit that you're lost in sins and tell God that you want him to change you into the person that he wants you to be and that you sincerely believe and trust in Christ Jesus good news the gospel that he is God in the flesh that he did die on the cross and he did take your sins with him into death and he did on the third day rise from the grave alive and in absolute righteousness and that righteousness now covers you if you believe and trust in that gospel. It covers you with his righteousness. Making you forgiven of all sin. And making you righteous in the sight of God. Covering you with the righteousness of Christ Jesus, his only begotten son. So when God looks at you, he doesn't see all the sins that you've committed in the past. Or that you've committed today. Or that you're going to commit in the next 50 years. He doesn't see that anymore. As long as you trust and believe in his son. Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. And you believe that. With all conviction. You believe the gospel. His death. Taking your sins with him into the grave. Buried for three days. Rising from the grave. Alive. Not coming. Not popping up as a ghost or a spirit my friends he came back alive he was in the flesh brother Thomas stuck his hand in Jesus' side they saw the holes in his hands and in his feet and he ate with them he ate fish and you know the reason why Jesus Christ when he came back the reason why he ate with them, he asked them if they had any food because he was hungry, wasn't because he was hungry. It was because he wanted to show them and the world through the scripture that he was indeed in the flesh. He came back and he was alive. He defeated death. Oh, death, where is thy sting? It's gone. Jesus buried it. My friends, all I can say is get ready for what's coming. Forget about the physical things, the material things. Make sure you're spiritually ready. If you've made a decision to be saved today, to get saved, if you've turned, turned over your trust and belief in, in, in Jesus Christ, then please let me know. If you want some help, I'll help you. I'll help you as much as I can. 
So peace and grace in Christ Jesus be unto you and your families. And I'll see you on my next video.